Here we go. Hello, everybody. Welcome to the round of 32, Dionysian versus Mad Jake. And what a start. We've got a blitz. Um, Dio was defending. Um, it's he a has, huge result. It's a massive result. Yeah, he's 300 TV down. He's gone for a guard, Chaos Dwarf, and a wizard. Um, Dio has a couple of bulls, not much else. Um, Mad Jake has got a pretty decently rounded uh, undead team. And in the booth with me is... Purple Chest. Hello, pleasure to be here, Jimmy. I'm really excited to see this one. We did debate, didn't we, what we thought Dionysian might go for. There was a couple of obvious strategies. The Wiz and the uh, rented guard chore filling out a missing on his roster was one obvious play. Uh, or perhaps to go with Grashnak, a big guy that uh, everyone loves, uh, and try and overpower these undead. But uh, instead he's going to solidify the roster, relying on those bulls that are quite rowdy. The rest of the team, though, very, very plain. Yeah. I mean, there is this, obviously, he's got two nice girls. He'll get the bolt, one of them, which is maybe, you know, maybe that's a thing. Like, he's not, he's got the balls, though. They could go around and hit him, but I don't know if that was a, a fact of the fact. I mean, because ghouls are just so fragile, aren't they? And getting that guaranteed, almost guaranteed, might you go knock down on them. Very good. You've just got to take out one of these with your bulls or like, you know, whatever. But he's got four decent ghouls, hasn't he, actually? Like, he's got two really good ones, obviously. Well, that isn't yeah. really good, but he's got a good ball carrier. And then he's got a I mean, as, as a pack, you think they're not bad, particularly for something at this sort of team value. Yeah, I like that he's got two side steppers and they're all defended. And one's, got, one's a stat freak, so quite good ghoul core, I would say. Um, mummies are fine. I mean, the undead teams, nice it's fun. its fine. It's not spectacular in any way, other than the ball handler. And you kind of expect at this TV to see something with at least one stat, if not two reasonable stats somewhere on the team. The yeah. mummies are solid. Uh, the whites are absolutely fine. Uh, I mean, I don't personally love the pom tackle one. I'd rather see a guard there. Um, but its it's okay. It, you know, it can gain value. There's lots it can do. Yep. Can the core of the meat shield is, is okay. But there's nothing here that really excites you. Um, so it's going to come down to the coaching of Mad Jake. Can he use a well-built undead team to stop a not particularly brilliant Chaos Dwarf team? Yeah. Coached by uh, by his own report, uh, the finest mind in Blood Bowl. Yeah, I mean, Dio is 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 great, isn't he? He's the current Blitzpit champion. And he, he, is. Is, uh, he is probably the, the mentally strongest coach in Blood Bowl, I would say. Um, He's uh, also the reigning Dome champion, uh, a competition he, he invented. Yeah, and but both of them absolutely grueling, and mm. uh, you know, and he's he's the king of both of them, isn't he? So he's he is. I, I kind of don't. He has, like he has the job to pick up some of his uh, some of his musings and feelings about Blood Bowl, certainly. Yeah, I, I don't like this tagging both though, right? Because that just makes an instant two D from the Rackler if you want to definitely move him, or from the Palmer if you you know if you want to be a bit greedy, but. Like, if he just tagged one of them, at least he would have had to move someone else to get the 2D on him, wouldn't he? Like, give him some options, whereas here he's just easily given up the 2D. I didn't like that. Yeah, say, it's... Um, I mean, I, I think he's planning to not get knocked over enough that next turn becomes very difficult for the undead. This turn does look a piece of cake. Yeah. But it's... Yeah, the, the greed reroll there, I don't hate. If you chip this bull, and it is the first half, you can throw an early reroll out and then just manage them better for the rest of the half. I don't like not Plus, playing. I think, I think if you're going to agree there's there. There's so much... Right. Yeah, then I think you, you really lean in. But there's so much contact here that getting the ball safe from that bull if it wasn't on the ground was looking really, really difficult. Yeah. Uh, even if you knock everything over, you've just got no movement left. Yeah. I would have just liked him to have been one square up. It's not that I hated the tag. I just thought... Tagging both is just crap, isn't it? <laughs> isn't it? I, th I, th I think it's too easy a start, yes. Yeah. I would have preferred to have seen, as you said, you know, have to move the assist in before doing the hit. This way, post hit, you've got too many options. Yeah. But I suppose it prevents, because of the tackle on the bull, it prevents one of them moving off and getting the ball and coming back and assisting. But I don't think there's a lot of game there. No. I, I think you're right. Now, this is the area where the two mummies are obviously going to be able to overpower these uh, these three rookie chorfs. But that's what they're there for, is to get hit. The question is, uh, does Mad Jake free up the white by just using the two mummies? I personally to. would. He you know, th to. Those are just... That's the loner and two rookie chorfs. What are you doing having your three best hitters tied up on all three of them? Yeah, he has to. He, has he to does. That's, that's a good move. 
push them up here and keep them both on him. Like that. Yeah, hey. oh, and gets the removal, which pays off for a good decision. And now, of course, that frees up the other white to go somewhere. The problem here is that outside of those mummies, he is getting slightly overpowered. Yep. Uh, on both flanks at once. So that's what I meant about next turn looking tricky with this much basing. Indeed. How on Otario? Punched in the cock. <laughs> was, yeah. I like TK. Was it Hancock, was it? I can't believe it. <laughs> I think the undead are going to have to stay deep, which is uh, why they wanted that bull down so badly. Yeah. Yeah, I think I think it was right to like you, right to want him down, which is why I would have considered blitzing with a rackler. But even then, if you put him down, like you know, you still got to then put someone basing him as well, haven't you? Yeah, so you got to base him because he gets back up. It's, so it, I mean, wrestle is a fantastic defensive skill and a good ball hawking skill, but it's just not a great blitzing or blocking skill for that exact reason, isn't it? Mm. Dibby. Dibby. I mean, the good news here is the mummies have done their job with that removal and also the stun. They are taking over that little pocket, giving him some hope of somewhere to go next turn. But he's he's going to lose out on both wings, I think. Yeah, I don't like that. I don't like moving a ghoul in to hit a, a stun firm, dude. No, uh, because the one in nine was always going to be problematic, and so it proves. Yeah, I mean, not even a one in nine, is it? Uh, uh, something a 45% chance of... Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes, because you need to add the pushes as fails, don't you? Yeah. So, yeah, you're right, 45%. Mm, it's dodging. Mm, two, three, four, five, six. So he could double dodge here to hit at the moment. There he is. Yep. He doesn't move him. And he skulls out and cases himself. Oh, boy. What a horrible, horrible turn for magic. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and All bad. I mean, it, it's another one of those examples where perhaps taking the dodge and failing in a better square to stand up next turn yeah, was better than that fail. But it's... Um... <laughs> I'm not sure there's a huge amount of point in hitting this ball except with the bull. Oh, no, it's a triple dodge. I thought it was a double dodge, but it's a triple, isn't yeah. it? Oh, yeah. No, it's so terrible. I think you just stay where you are. That you're monstering his line of scrimmage. You've got to deal with the mummy problem, but yeah, you can still keep him just as tied up. You're now getting up on numbers as well. Yeah. Well, no, it's even, isn't it? We've had one each side, and you, that that the stunned loner isn't helpful. No, it's not. Uh... We can bang some people. I get some mighty blow hits. You'll be loving that. He's an absolute banger, isn't he, Dio? <laughs> well known. <laughs> well, I, mean, I mean, particularly on this flank where you get to smash on one of those ghouls, I think that's got to be prioritised. Yeah. Uh, the, yeah, the fodder removal there is going to really, really help, so that flank's crumbled. Yeah, completely crumbled. I kind of liked hit hitting him with the mighty blower, so that mm. then the rookie could have tagged the mummy, but I guess you don't even need to tag him, right? He's only moving three, so I guess he's not going to get tagged, he's just going to get um, screened off by the... Uh, yeah. Something yeah, it's like about that. whether those two can, uh, you know, use the ghouls and the whites to force some sort of pocket to stage the ball into on its way up towards the touchdown line. But it's, yeah. I mean, they can. It's how many dodges are needed for it. Yeah, I so don't see a way of taking the mummies out right now. So one just blitzing. has to cope with them. Mate, you blow a tackle on a ghoul. That is a good blitz. Yeah, right? that. I mean, that ghoul is such a tasty target. Of course, we could get the uh, the base ball here as I well as the we could, Yeah, I think we could see a base ball. I think we probably should see. Are a we base done, ball. Jim? Is this game over? It could be. Do you just stand up the ball now, though? I think after there that removal is. and the base, I think um, you just stand him up. Yeah, I don't hate that. I mean, you've got the one of the whites under control. If you do, it's you know, he can't use his dodge because he's a tackle. So you're standing up on the right one uh, to take another skill out of the game, which is always a good thing to do. I don't hate that. Then he's looking at a one die just to move the ball, and then where the hell does he go? Yeah. Yeah, I think you run around here, don't you? And then, uh, and then two D one of these, two D one of these ghouls. Yep. Out of right to run. Whilst bringing the hot god slightly more to bear on the ball area right now, and limiting progress up that wing, it's all good. Yeah. I mean, there is the hole up through where the mummies are, but then you can just see dwarves arriving from every side. 
Yeah. And the ball's coming up your bum. I hope you're coming up your bum. He could have, he could have dodged and come back here. Yeah, that is where he's going. Yeah, I, I kind of like that because then that yeah, shows that's up that middle that of whole lot, front area. Yeah, it's still the right white to be on, but it's a better position to be on it for only a two, Oof, two plus risk. I do like that. The push was pretty bad though, so I think. Um, yeah. There's maybe it's not a block to take actually. Or to keep the Hobgoblin two squares further back, so at yes. least couldn't dodge forwards. Yes, yeah, I didn't like him assisting from there. I would have either wrapped Although, around the back. you know, being up there puts him, in, as I said at the time, into more of a ball threat position, but I hadn't looked at the sidestep. Yeah, I, I would have put him in the back and then the other guy to that side. Yes. And then that would have made the sidestep worse, I think, because he'd have been, like, you know, kind of surrounded yep. a bit. And then, he would and then you don't advance to keep the other one in, yeah. a, in a slightly tighter spot. Yeah. yeah, no, I might have done the same. This does look Gucci. Right. <laughs> this, does, this does look pretty Gucci for Dio. The full backfield press with both balls. The disadvantage of this is if you can get the balls either tied down or knocked down, it doesn't make the, the Chaos Dwarf very responsive if you can get away. Yeah. And there is that hole up where the two mummies are. Yeah. You're, so, you're a bit raw, but in a yeah, one guy on the bull that's marking the ball... And then the same white gets around behind the other one. Yeah, Could rough, possibly it? work. It's rough because he's battered on both flanks now, isn't he? Yeah, you might Or a, a three bit plus off with the downed ghoul first to make that a two die on that bull. And then the same white again around the back of the other bull. And then the ghoul just pegs it up through where the mummies are. With one it. going each side to tie up the dwarves. It's the best I can come up with. We like a good pegging. Yeah, your microphone is, is cracking pretty badly. Sorry, I'll, uh, I'll pop it out and come back. Yeah, under it, it's, it's rough, isn't it? Yeah, he's got to punch him. And he's got this guy free. Yeah, I think he's just got to yeah, push. It's horrible, a push, because it means he definitely can't come out now. Um, but you've just got to, you've just got to go for it. Yeah, go here. He blocks. He can make a cage, can't he? He can make a cage. It's, t it's horrible because yeah. you're getting it's battered next turn. Yes. But it's all you can do this turn, I think. I mean, I think this 3 plus from the Ghoul is the way forwards. Oh, oh dear. Oh, no. I don't like it. <laughs> Whatever it is, I don't like it. Yeah, maybe a fireball. Wouldn't hate it. Any one of the four not getting knocked down gives me a 2D on the ball, doesn't it? I don't know, I'm just, I'm now, uh, my stream's just crashed, so I'm currently watching your stream. No, oh dear. Uh, I'll tell you what, I'll, I'll, again. I'll tell you what I'll do. I'll, uh, I'll stream this here in Discord so you can see, you can see it as, oh, yeah. it, as it happens. Green sharing until I get my own up again. Oh, cool. Yeah, so I guess he's trying to play around the wizard a bit here, which I think he probably... Like, I don't know. I feel like if you do that, it makes you weaker against the non-wizards, doesn't it? I guess... So I don't know if he's going and hoping he spunks his wizard away where he doesn't really need it. Oh God, now, that's bored. pretty much the move I was talking about. It's not quite how I'd have done it, but he's got up into that space with the mummy's uh, two pillars of uh, Hercules. <laughs> Straits of Gibraltar holding back the dwarf flood from either side of that midfield position. Um, it's not bad. There's a there's a bull dodge, isn't there, which gives some lovely options. If the first dodge doesn't use break tackle, it's very easy. If it does, you go around the outside. It's still doable. Yeah, this looks crap. Yeah. But, I mean, it was hard to make it not look crap, wasn't it? To be fair. Well, I mean, hence I think this dodge off to get around the other side of that bull is a priority. Doesn't re-roll it. No, but he doesn't re-roll it. I think this ghoul gets smacked. It sure looks like it. All he's got to do is, uh, well, nothing. But <laughs> He's got to roll a 2 plus to hit him. But um... Well, it's either 2 plus, 2 plus. Um, you know, you can go for it around the back side of that mummy and get yourself two dice. Just two two D and just do one, two plus. Or you can do the break tackle through the middle, yeah. Yeah, just one, two plus. The problem with the one two plus is that there's no automatic reroll because it's not a dodge. True. Where the go for it's do have the sure feet auto reroll, giving you more chance of four dice when you get there, but less movement afterwards. So there's it mm. swings and roundabouts, Jimmy. Jimmy, and who's to say what's right and wrong? 
Exactly. You could also hit with this guy. Um, you could hit the ghoul first. So that, yep. then that would give you a mighty blow hit on the ball, which is nice, isn't it? That would be nice. Yeah, do that. <laughs> Wrestle. As we all know, you should mighty blow blitz every turn. Mm. That is really the only true indicator of skill in Blood Right, he does go that way in. This is still a 2+, plus, isn't it? Yeah. yeah. It's still a 2+, plus to Mighty Blow here, but I, I like it. It gives you the other ball to then come and, yeah, at the very least, put a tackle zone on the ball or possibly fetch afterwards. Yeah. Bring one ball back first. Yep, that's an idea, isn't it? Yeah, that's but you know idea. me. I'm an, I'm an all-the-marbles kind of guy. I... I'd blitz first and then bring the other good ball back, but I know where he's sidestepped to and where the ball's gone. I would as well, yeah. Because I can choose different routes. But I don't mind bringing the Hobgoblin back yeah. first. Now, that yeah. is sensible. Yeah, I like that. Yeah. Could even bring that's back two. A, Could even make a, this mighty blow hit here, couldn't he? That's an IQ 3000 play. Yeah, absolutely he will. And, uh, and move the other one back too, putting a full-on uh, screen in front of this sidestepping Hobgob. Yeah. Yeah, I like that. It's all good, it's all Gucci. It's it's a good turn, <laughs> properly turn ordered, nicely executed. I mean, from a strong position, but, you know, making strong positions stronger is what makes uh, Dia the co sort of coach that he is. Yeah. Yes, our Yeti. Uh, the reason we're Gucci-fying quite a lot is it's one of Dio's expressions when uh, when both nice and bad things happen to him and he is streaming. Is he is prone to describe them as Gucci. <laughs> In an attempt to feel down with the kids and look in some way street smart or yeah. I was just thinking, Wolf, if you like, you know, he's got sidestep rights, so you don't know where he's going to end up. If you could have just get, like, what if you get a push and don't get the ball, you know, or if you get a one and nine and don't get the ball. So, like, you don't know exactly where he's going to be. Like, if he didn't have sidestep, yeah. then I think moving him down to be basing him after you've pushed him or whatever is would have been made more sense, but I just didn't like it as much with the wild Well, if he didn't have sidestep, there would be a reasonable argument for putting in the other bull and both hobgobs as assists and making it a three die. Yeah. But because you don't know where he's going and where the bounce will go, I preferred the screen and then the mobile bull after the hit because it just gives you more options to respond wherever it goes. Yeah, yeah, that's fair enough. I just wouldn't, I just wouldn't roll a double one, and I'd think, you know. <laughs> yeah, I wouldn't one in thirty-six, and it would all be all right. Yeah, you know, just don't double one. Duh. <laughs> Why would you roll a double one, idiot? <laughs> <laughs> but no, yeah, it's a good, it's a good shout, good shout. That is a good point because it's so dominating, and he's got the wizard as backup as well, hasn't he? So like, yeah, yeah. I mean, wizard and the two hobgobs was the backup. Moving the other bull first does give you that, which is that if the hits fail, you've got another bull to hit with next turn in the right position. But it's so much more dominating to knock the ball down and then have the choice of where that ball goes. Yeah, and plus, like, he's made the GFI, hasn't he? He couldn't have made that GFI. He's made two GFIs. Yeah. So, moving the ball first, he doesn't get to do the GFIs because then you're adding further. So he'd have only come down in midfield and not really doing a lot if he was there, wasn't he? If you could have got here without GFIs... I'd yeah, probably then probably first. I would have put it in. Yeah. And as I said, without the sidestep, meaning that the ball could go, you know, right next to a mummy and all sorts of horrible places, I probably would have gone for the three die. Yeah. That's what I've always said, I don't really need re-rolls there for the week. <laughs> Club bowls easy, just roll the right dice. Yeah. Oh, and again. So this is a nightmare for the undeads. Um, we've got the mummies around the ball. That's good. He's got a GFI game. Why is he not GFI yet? Okay. Isn't that the wrong way? Now it pushes. Not very good. I don't know what he's doing. <laughs> There's certainly no panic time-wise. So all we need at the moment is to make sure we're in control of where this ball ends up, isn't it? Yeah, I think he's going to scatter it. He's going to scatter it. I think that's not a great idea. Yeah, I don't, I don't think it is either. But I think that's what he's doing. 
There you go. Although, you know, the plus Woo! side of that is the full removal is a huge momentum change. Yeah. Oh, and no. To the extent that, yeah, I did. Instantly I wondered, is the Apoth going in on it? And it did. Yeah, now there's an all the marbles play. There's the power apple from Dio. Well, I mean, is it? Is it? I mean, it's the super power apo, isn't it? I mean, a power apo is a badly hurt in the first half. I just think it was any. It, I just think it's any any apo. Any that, use that isn't to preserve long term teams, yeah. Yes, yeah. But a KO is is double rowdy, isn't it? Very, yeah, uh, very much so. But of course, the bulls are so central to how this very bare bones chaos dwarf team does its business that I, I'm not sure he's wrong. I think without either, he'd be in real trouble. Yeah, I think if this was Dio's drive, um, the power up would be less appealing because he'd have two chances to get it back. At this point, he thinks Dio thinks Dio knows. He's yeah. gonna, you know, there's only one. He's going to score on turn eight, or yeah. or it's going to be nil nil. Yeah, exactly. So with only one KO roll, you losing him for what six turns, and then fifty fifty you're losing him for fourteen turns. Yeah. Yeah, exactly, Wolf. Yeah, that's the thing. He's, he's definitely thinking he's only getting one roll at him, isn't he? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. I think I agree. I think there's good reasoning behind it all. Yeah. But it does add a little bit of free sound, doesn't it? It does indeed, yeah. Especially if someone dies, if some shitter dies now. Um, yeah, I mean, it's, you know, it hasn't actually changed anything, but it's just added that little edge. <laughs> like when you're in a bar with someone and they lean over and say, I'm not wearing underwear. You know, nothing has actually changed. There's just a little bit of a... <laughs> A little bit of a frisson added to that moment. It's it's not so good when it's Wanger that says that, to be honest. <laughs> <laughs> or your four-year-old. Oh, God. <laughs> oh, hey, Wanger. <laughs> okay, now. <laughs> oh, dear. That's pretty good with that. And no, yeah, that's what I was thinking, Chimp. <laughs> I'm dragging them out, Chimp. <laughs> that's that's where I go to find them. I mean, to be fair, it's better than leave them in the hotel room on their own, isn't it? Yeah. Or tie them up outside like a dog. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, dear. Right. So, Dio... Does he uh, does he scatter the ball? <sighs> um, I mean, stand for mummies are a pain, aren't they? Uh, as a whites, I don't think he's in any urgent need to pick this ball up. He's not, no. no, he isn't. He's I think we might see a, a stabilising turn from him if he can knock one of the mummies over. No, no, that white off the ball. <laughs> he's straight in with a GFI. Brilliant. <laughs> So, yeah, he is going for that. Now, maybe not scatter it and then knock down the mummy. Yeah. Yeah. And then just retrieve it from where it is. It's it's a better plan. Yeah, now that he's got the pow. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. I think, yes, on a push, we may have seen a scatter. I think you're right. It gave him the option play, didn't it? I know, because he hasn't followed. Oh, because that wouldn't have been the assist. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Yeah. Now he drops one hobgoblin in as, in as the assist, and the other one's still there to fetch. Yeah. Oh dear, this is very, very bleak for the undead. It is, isn't it? Gets the pal and the stand firmer. Now that was an interesting choice. I may have just kept that area clear by putting the assist the other side, but of course what he ensured putting it there was yet another tackle zone needed clearing on the ball. Yeah. In yeah. case of pushes there, which as we talked about before is about 45%. Yeah, I quite like putting that side because you've still got... Yeah, and no, I think it is the right choice. There's still a route, isn't there? Yeah, absolutely. Does he even be... No, you can't... I think the ball's bad. You can't pick up with that. the ball, can yeah. you? Yeah, you're exposing that. I mean, it's, it is only 4 SPP. He will be looking at the value of that. But... Yeah. Because he's greedy like that. Yeah, I guess um, you could you could move the hobgoblin out to the right of the ball because then that would be like a wider screen if it went wrong. So it's not because like you know he's not great where he is the ball is he or maybe he could just move the ball one across and then go for the pickup. I don't know. 
I don't I, know. What would be taxing me here is that I'd be wanting to hand off to the bull rather than pick up with it. Because then I can control where the fail is and I can put it behind where my pieces now yeah. are. Basically where the hobgoblin is. But moving the bull there first removes the cover from the pickup. Oh god, yeah, you couldn't move him first. No, you could always. So this later, probably isn't the turn to do it. I would just. Do, I mean, but then I'm not as greedy as Dio when it comes to scoring on the right pieces. <laughs> um, I would. I would just take control of the ball and settle for that as my win this turn, which is looks like that is what he's doing. Yeah. And now you just pop it in behind that screen that is naturally created between the uh, the loner and the bull. Okay. He is trying to hand off to the bull. No, 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 no. No, he's just, just widening his screen. No. Okay. Fine. Yeah, I think I think it was wise to widen That's that good. screen first. I think. Yeah. I would have done that first, but yeah. Um, it is again. It's about yeah. where the ball might have bounced to, I suppose, if the uh, if the pickup didn't work. Yeah. But I yeah, just, I, I just thought it was a better shape. It is a better shape now. Yeah. I don't know if it's right or not. It has been a bloodbath. Yeah, it's crazy. It's only turn three, isn't it? But I mean, it's yeah. There was the blitz as well, of course. So it's, it's the blitz, more which like turn always four. intensifies the early game action, doesn't it? <laughs> yeah, it's more like turn four, and yeah, it's ratcheted it up by the intense uh, contact at the start. But yeah, loads of removals. Four yeah, gone. only two rerolls left each side. The wizard's still in play, and loads of removals. Yeah, this is looking horrible for Mad Jake now. Claw is OP, yeah, those two claw pommers that Dio had. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Dio's team lo looks rubbish on paper, but then when you make the same removals as a 2000 TV <laughs> 12 team would, it's all right, isn't it? <laughs> and you don't need the bloat of all of that claw. Yeah. If just a rookie dwarf can do it. You know, yeah, exactly. Why try harder? Well, that's a nice stun in some ways. It's utterly irrelevant in others. <laughs> it's going to be relevant next turn um, because when that dwarf stands up, the uh, the zombie is going to be able to clear that mummy off and get it back into the action. Yeah. But it hasn't done much sort of right now, which is where the undead need the help because that ball's gone. Okay, this time we do get the power on one of the stand firms. Stand firms certainly proved its value. Yeah, it's been all right. Rebelers will be loving it. <laughs> oh, there's the pylon. One of that. That was pretty greedy, wasn't it? That was, yeah. Well, I think that was a doomed attempt to change momentum. Yeah. But unfortunately, what it's done is it's allowed that bull total freedom that otherwise would have had to have dodged off, which at least would have limited its its usability. Yeah. It's taken yet another tackle zone out of the picture for the Chaos Dwarves to advance through. And hasn't even broken armor, so it's, it was horrific, Jim, wasn't it? <laughs> yeah, I think if it was Claw, pylon, then you... fair enough, you know? Yeah, look, because Claw is mighty and the maths there are fantastic, but even then it would be a bit greedy, a bit wanting the luck. Yeah. Here it was just bad. Yeah, and when you're down, when, you know, when you've had four players removed... Yeah, I get why, gone. which is why I'm not raging against it. Yeah. Yes. You know, you're desperately trying to turn the luck somehow, aren't you? Yeah. I think we can all feel that. Yeah, dar has got plenty of time. No, no need to do a PC here. He can, no. <laughs> he can take his time. No, he can amble his way, as long as he keeps the mummies nice and isolated and away from causing trouble. There's a break tackle one, but it's it's just not got the move to get anywhere worrying. As long as you stay, you know, five squares away. Yeah, but it looks like he's, I mean, the, with the position of this bull, it looks like he is going to uh, tempt in this mummy a little bit, isn't it? Yeah, it does mean he's going to have to mark it. Yeah. Or at least screen it effectively. And the only way to really screen it is probably a sideline cage. Mm. Which, you know, he hates. With good reason, they're terrible. Yeah. Particularly against the strength five break tackle, obviously. Yeah. So there we are. It's uh, it's a double dodge screen, um, mm. unless he pals this dwarf. Yeah, in which case, the dwarf. Single so I guess the hobble is going to come in from. Somehow. Yeah, it's going to have to, isn't it? There are still ways of making this safe, but it does mean that this other mummy needs to go down. 
Yep, gets him. Gets him on a loner hit. But a push was fine there. So slightly hard to grumble. Push wasn't fine, he's got stand firm. Oh, it's got stand firm? No, it was a power needed. Yeah, you're right. Yeah. And he's also got this uh, this ghoul coming through for a 1D potentially, so he's got to worry about the ghoul and the mummy. That's the sidestep tackle ghoul, yeah. Six, seven, eight, nine. Yeah, that's only uh, assuming you could knock this dwarf and either move it or knock it over, the one touching the mummy at the moment. That ghoul is only a, a three plus and two go for it's from one die. If you do manage to power that dwarf right now, the mummy is a break tackle and a single go for it from two die yeah. on the ball carrier. And there's only one hobgoblin left to solve all of that. Yeah, he can't solve them both, can he? No, and hobgoblins aren't particularly brilliant at solving anything. So <laughs> let, let's see how this gets done. Yeah, I mean, like, the obvious move is, like, just in between, so he screens off all that back way, isn't it? But then that does leave yeah. him open to the pal. Um, yes, one, the one to the left of where the hobgoblin is now makes the break tackle in at minus three, so it made that a 50%, uh, and it would make it only one die when you got there. So that's one space, or... Um, Next, just underneath where the backwards bull is, would make that uh, a double dodge to get in, so that would be another option. Tagging the mummy would have been a third, but then yeah. it's two dodges. Need the first one to be lucky. Yeah. Uh, or you could just stand next to the sidestep dodge piece and hope mm -hmm. to force a one in nine fail, which well, is not my choice. He's got the power. Yeah, he's got so... the power. So now it is a, it's a three plus in, isn't it? It's yeah. the equivalent of AG5, but minus two, so that's a three plus. The two die on the ball, uh, I, I think that's irresistible. And with the ghoul to move afterwards to try and clear the ball up. I don't like the pointless block first. What the hell are we hitting with the clear up ghoul with ball? <laughs> yeah. Ah, uh, okay, well, that was a choice. Um, so now we can knock the ball over and then look at it on the ground and go, look at that ball. <laughs> Yep. But, oh, the dodge fails anyway. And hence it's a turnover. Yeah, I didn't like that. Well, look, I mean, if you knock the hobgoblin to the side and the ball goes out, there was a chance that uh, something else could have recovered it. But it was... Uh, it was not great. <laughs> yeah, no, I think you got it. Like, and plus just like the chance of having the reroll, isn't it? I know it's a 1 in 36, mm -hmm. and you could say if you roll the 1 in 36, you would have failed the dodge but also what if you make that block and it's a double pow then you would have made the dodge and now you could then could then you could go and fail the thing isn't it like it's just adding yeah. a fail state to the dice rolls yeah exactly there just didn't seem to be an upside to it i mean what was the best case scenario as well that you've yeah. knocked over a hobgoblin yeah exactly skillless so. hobgoblin when he's got two on the bench well well done um so i, I just thought it was awful uh, also yeah. awful uh, <laughs> not moving the rackle ghoul uh, behind the white first. Yeah. Uh, also awful. Not using a reroll uh, <laughs> on that failed dodge. He couldn't because he dub scold with the. Uh, yeah. With the... So you know that was when you needed your reroll. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and particularly once you'd already then used the reroll, that's when the the other ghoul had to move first. Yeah. Or maybe just dodge. change tactics and blitz the blitz the. Yeah, and had some ball contact and got the other pieces back ready for a hit next turn. Yeah. But it's so, bad turn ordering, bad decisions. Uh, yeah. About ten things wrong outcome. with that. <laughs> yeah. Ten things I hate about you. <laughs> oh dear. Well, there's a removal again from Dio. These uh, claw pom claw pom chores that he's got pretty effective. Wayne Ferrer, I would have put the rest of my team into the positions I wanted them into first possibly excluding one uh, and that one which was the one he chose to hit with ready to respond to try and get the ball if good things happen then I would have done the break tackle hit with the mummy and I would have taken a both down yeah you've got to I mean at this point because you're pretty desperate yeah. it's not as if like but I'd have tried to get everything except one ball responding piece into good positions before I did that attack yeah but it would have been the focus of my turn there wouldn't have been any risks taken before I did it yeah. 
accept hitting that dwarf to see if it was possible, because if not, the ghoul dodge around was the plan B. Indeed. Indeedly doodly. Honestly, sometimes you just got to be serious and answer people, haven't you? <laughs> boring. Right, more jokes than taking the piss. Um, so, Dio's going to win this. Um... <laughs> yes, he's, he, is, he is what is technically known Wayne Farah as proper fucked. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> These undead have been, I think to use modern vernacular, done up the wrong one. Um, <laughs> And it's, it's odd, because as we said pre-game, this undead team had a little bit of everything. It wasn't spectacular, but it was really solid across the board. Um, there was nothing you looked and thought, oh, why haven't they got... No, it was there. He's got a one they team, though. Whites. They had good... Well, I mean, I think the reason he didn't re-roll is he's kept... Um, he, has he kept one for this turn? I mean, he seems to think there'll be another option, and well, he's, he's just there. Wasted. He's just wasted the guy who could have hit the ball. Uh, okay. There is another, in the immortal words of um, Space Wizards. <laughs> um, there is a zombie dodge that could have been done, but we've greeted that one die instead. Oh, yeah. Instead of the 4 plus 2 plus 2 plus for a hit mm. on the Enjoy naked ball down. carrier, um, we're trying to knock out a lone chore. Because mm. that's important. Yeah. <laughs> wow, I don't... Was there a point to that? No. <laughs> okay, good, good. <laughs> Checking. Because I'm not, I don't want to look harder than I need to, you know. I, I saw it happen. I saw no reason. I thought, should I look for a reason? Is that. What was he doing there? I mean, probably blitzing the hot. No, because he could have done that just by the hobgob, maybe. But no. I mean, he had a two die blitz on the hobgob if he just wanted to hurt something. Yeah. I mean, yeah, you know, of course he's been really unlucky, right? He got, he got yeah. blitzed on, he got a lot of players yeah. removed instantly. Yeah. Um, I didn't hate the anti-blitz plan. Um, the holding it in the backfield, try and punch away forwards, the coming up through the two mummies. Nope. Uh, and Dia got lucky in turning him over there, but... But then also he did stick his free ghoul onto the stand firm, didn't he? Which I really didn't like that one. Really didn't like that. I, I see that, Wayne Ferrer, but do you against a team that's this vanilla? Didn't you just need a better way of dealing with the Bulls? I mean, I'd, I'd have tried to get them down and fouled them out. I think that was an option. I mean, quite but a good undead. Blitz really kiboshed that, yeah. this whole half, didn't it? It's... I think Wayne saying quite good undead is not going to win the cup, which is fair enough. Yeah, but it could have won this game. Oh, yeah. I mean, I mean as, it, time. as it's gone, it's we'll be lucky to see a second half, won't we? Because with two out for the game and three knocked out, yeah. we might not even see enough undead to really put up any kind of challenge. Yeah. And if Dio's got the ball and is a touchdown up, he's not going to come adventurous unless he already feels there's no threat. Yeah. Yeah, no, I think I think what he needed was, I think he needed to not double score that. I think if he hadn't dub scored that and he said his reroll, he'd have gone for the handoff. But I think without only having one reroll now, there's no chance of a handoff. Yeah. Well, I would say that, but then I'm not as greedy. Um, <laughs> the flip side of that, I suppose, is that there is one, still one reroll. Um, there is a turn to try and solve it next turn with an AG3 if it doesn't work. And with a wizard in hand and an undead team in disarray. You're just not feeling threatened about scoring next half if you had to. True, true. You could go for the 50-50, and then if it fails, go for the 8 or 9. Yep. Or you could go for the 75, and then if it fails, go for the go for the, plus. Go for the 66, yeah. yeah. I mean, 75 and 66 isn't bad odds, is it? It's not bad at all, no. You'd take that for a sizable bet, but you might not take that for your life, so... <laughs> yeah. When it's a little children's game, then... Who gives a shit? <laughs> it's a bit like voting people off in Among Us, you know? God, was... well, you started that. I thought you said if it was a little children's life, who'd give a shit? I'd do it. <laughs> <laughs> I thought you were going full dark. <laughs> no, but you know, in Among Us, you don't care. Yeah. You're not, you're no, that's not, how I feel. Exactly. That's how I've always shit. felt about that one, Jim. I play that mm. for silly laughs. Yeah. And hence, if it, you know, if I get it all wrong, oh well. Yeah. 
<laughs> and if a certain someone gets incredibly ragey about just how unfair it is, because like what I did, just no one should have thought that. <laughs> um, I just think that's hilarious. Yeah, all the more reason to vote them off. <laughs> Absolutely. The next round, all my spare votes go there because <laughs> secretly I'm evil. Yeah. Um, right. So uh, there's still some blood bowl happening, sort of. Sort of. Yeah. I mean, He's got the to just run the hope, running right? away from the ball and trying yeah. to stay alive. I get that. They want to be able to put up a challenge second half, but... Yeah, it's rough, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> Punching the side. <laughs> Jim Sus. Calcium out PC to PC. <laughs> oh, in the... <laughs> it was great how calcium completely ignored <laughs> Muppet venting and stabbing me in the face <laughs> oh my god oh sorry Gadenik sorry sorry yeah because he needs the ball oh, doesn't he sorry like, day. yeah that, that's nice so bleak if it's any consolation it seems they are just anti-Australian Gadenik because Cocky was having the same problems getting in yeah yeah, maybe. So it might be a, a localization issue, or who knows? Yeah. <laughs> Betrayed by blindness. <laughs> yeah. He might he might be going for a pass second half. Wolf. How about a completion and touchdown second half? I think that might be on Mayo's Dio's mind, seeing as he is in such dominant position, right? Yeah, I mean, absolutely, it is the time to play. I'm very surprised just to see that. Uh, that somewhat bland stall up without an attempt to maximize his equity though. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, maybe Wayne. <laughs> maybe if that happens. But Dio would love to skill that five SPP hobgob for a dirty player, so I'm I'm so surprised that the ball didn't get thrown last turn on that exact trajectory. To give one SPP to the naked hobgob and then the uh, the touchdown goes to the one that needs the I don't think it's that greedy, is he? Needs it for the not. level. No, I mean, not greedy. It's the wrong term, isn't it? It's, we always use negatives for these things. So careful in how he sculpts his team because all he cares about is winning the challenge. Not, you know, getting to round four is nothing to Dio, is it? Mm. He cares about the long term. He's in it for six games. And at this point, he's thinking about winning this game, but also about winning the five behind it. Yeah. I think he might go for the completion and touchdown on the ball. I mean, I, I, if anything, mean it as a positive, is that I think he, you know, he looks at that strategy, the strategy for the whole competition. Yeah. Always oh, knock that zombie closer. Dangerous. It might uh, quad GFI. <laughs> Base the ball. <laughs> yeah. It actually needs two pushes. Um, I'm... <laughs> I don't think it's possible, though. Oh, did you see my playoff game, uh, PC? Uh, I think I did. I could have. I, there was. I had like a KO. I, I, it was on the turn eight, turn sixteen against the Dark Elves. They they bolted yeah. my carrier, and yeah. I had a choke, two Chaos Warriors that weren't in range. But I looked at the Vod and I could have chained. I could have. I could have chained. Yeah, I, I, I did think you were. Slightly over prioritizing knocking the ball down and not having things into range. But even though it wasn't in range, I could have chained it in the range. That was the thing. Yeah. I mean, there was a lot that needed to get done that turn, though. It did. It was a bleak turn. Yeah. It was very sad, though, when I spotted it. I was like, that was the best way. But then I, I, I did a ball down on the blitz anyway, so it wouldn't work out anyway. Right, let's have a look at this. Dub skulls instant. Dio, it's not going to roll any more dice this turn. Is he? Is he? No. He might. No, at that point, with the double, you you take it because you can do more, can as you say, throwing the ball around in the backfield. You can three D, particularly though. with that ghoul gone as well. Actually, that just removes even more pressure from the next half, doesn't yeah. it? Yeah, so. I wouldn't have been. I wouldn't have hit the three D there on the ghoul. No, he does just step in. Yeah, yeah turn eight handoff would be mad. Yeah. Because if he'd done it earlier, he's got like the, the you know, as you said. I think, I think turn seven was the turn to do it. Like I said, that uh, Hobgoblin getting one SPP for the throw 
and the one on five scoring to get to eight, I'd have thought would have been lovely. And it gives you a dirty player for the next round. I don't like that. I would have rather just done the handoff to the ball. Sure. Sure. I mean, it still gives you the same. It's, it's the five one getting to eight that's the priority. I don't know that that ball. I mean, it obviously gets better with another skill, but does 76 really bring you wonderful things on it if it's not a stat? Or a double, uh, but yeah, not much. It's just mighty blow. I suppose it's a mighty throw. blow, isn't it? Yeah, or stand for exactly. Stand yeah. Although, you know, both are great skills, so. You might just, yeah, you yeah, might just do a few vanities. Yeah, you could go for the five, could get a completion. Yes, the, I think the, the five will probably go a for a completion, won't it? Yeah. That makes Ho perfect sense to Hobo me. Hobo and Bull, I think they could both, oh, I think we could see them both pass. Yeah, dodge is incredible, but obviously you need the double. Yeah, that's good yes, that, yeah. that bull only needs one pass and a score, and the hobgoblin one pass. I it, I wouldn't be amazed to see him try those in this half now that he's already a, a touchdown ahead. Oh my god, he's got two five SPP chores. Just pass with everybody. <laughs> <laughs> well, we might see that. We might see a, a, a chaos dwarf Dacker here. <laughs> pass with everybody. He just runs away and passes the ball about. <laughs> that would be peak dial, wouldn't it? <laughs> Oh, oh man, I need that. I need that. I need to be on the Rebel Discord here. I, I think need is a very odd word in that sentence. <laughs> I need it. <laughs> Amazing! Oh, there's a blitz the other way! Wow. Four, seven, eight, nine. Only nine players left, though. Bad KOs. Bad regens. Not only one region, but still. Um. And this blitz is not as devastating, is it? Yeah, the response is, you must respect our authority. <laughs> I now have two separate heads up warnings from them. <laughs> well, as I said in my comment, it wasn't clear to me as it wasn't specified who he was speaking to. <laughs> Whether the first warning had been to me or not, it now it is clear that I have received warnings. Yeah. Multiple. Do not, not clear if that's a strike. I shall have to read their <laughs> policies. <laughs> right time. Do not question our authority. <laughs> <laughs> oh, they're funny, aren't they, rebel wankers? <laughs> oh, dear. Obviously, you don't have to call them wankers, PC, but they are. <laughs> I I have no experience of them beyond the fact that so far the only two people from in authority views expressed in this stream are not supported by the rebel admin team. <laughs> and hostile, but yeah. um, you know that's their entitlement. Yeah. No, I'm not a yeti, but I'm contemplating joining the rebel clan system. I say contemplating. I suppose they are contemplating letting us in. <laughs> yeah. Might be more appropriate. We have applied. As a clan to join the rebel clan system, <laughs> um, but the process of doing so has achieved me now two warnings. <laughs> <laughs> I said the biggest challenge will, will not get me getting banned before you get to Division One. <laughs> it's not. Which even it's an interesting state of affairs. <laughs> yeah. I will have to be very careful as to how I. I would say proceed, but as I haven't started, as to how I start. <laughs> <laughs> I wasn't even joking when I said that. Everybody is. <laughs> Blitz back feels fair, except, of course, where's the undead team? And the answer is it's in the dead and KO box. Yeah, yeah. So it, it, it makes him players. just less able to respond to it. Um, he's tried to put some pressure on. I, I respect that. The mummies have blitzed up both flanks, which is great. Trying to put some pressure into the backfield. It's not going to work, but it's a, it's a really nice try. 
least he tried. Well, it's not going to work, Jimmy, is it? No, it's not going to work, no. It's right, so that's <laughs> not unfair of me. It's just truth bombing. Yeah, and he um, put in the reroll, which was fair, because if he rerolls yeah. it and he gets the power and gets the cast, then it's 9 versus 10, and he's... He's still he's not going to work, but it's a bit closer no, to working. <laughs> exactly, exactly. And when you look, when you're in this much trouble, you need, you do need some things to go right for you. Yeah. And hence things like greed rerolls that in more stable positions you'd think that's awful. Here it's a lot more understandable. Yeah. Because as Jimmy says, you need to swing the momentum. You need to change the outcome. Because uh, right now this is just all terrible. Yeah. Um, even basing that. Uh, for some reason, move five chorf. Um, normally, you'd think, well, why have you bothered with that? Here, you think, okay, you're you're nailing another piece down that might cause a problem that does need an assist somehow. Yeah. And I'd like to see this ghoul get some pressure towards the backfield. Okay, I suppose there's a route there because the mummy's dominating that corner. Yeah, he's he's got to he's got to keep him safe as well, hasn't he? If you like. Yes, he does. If there's an answer, it's that ghoul doing something, isn't it? Yeah. Or at least being the second half of something that gets done. Jim, Basil, all I'm trying to do is play some Blood Bowl <laughs> with some friends, but that may not be as simple as that. No, it's, it's never as simple as that in Rebel. <laughs> <laughs> It's it's okay, you know, if you follow. Well, you might say that, Jim. Apparently, I can't possibly comment. No, if you follow Wes Welker's uh, lead of being a good little foot soldier, then it's all right. But um, if you have the temerity to, like, you know, speak, then bad news. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Volk, I, th I thought that was particularly evil of you. <laughs> yeah, uh, accepting their suggestion. Uh, I can understand why that would get you banned. <laughs> Not outrageous, really. Oh, another dub skulls for Dio. That's like three dub skulls in about four turns, but... He gets a removal out of it. They have a brand they need to protect. I mean, they're, you know, it's a valuable commodity, a brand. It is, yeah. Yeah, so that's yet another removal. He's undead, not holding up to this. Uh, not very hit to the Dwarf theme. Yeah, the suggested clan tag was FAP. <laughs> 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 because their their clan was frenzy and pass, and then this their their rebel admin suggested to call them fap. <laughs> yep. Hence, Fumble United. We we were you know threatened because our name is Fumble United, which is. You know, people don't say, oh, Manchester United. You can't call it that. But apparently Fumble United is toxic. <laughs> um. Yeah. I wasn't allowed to say BLGF. Well, not me. I didn't, I didn't even try it. No, I think they just told me. I just think they just outright told me I wasn't allowed to say BLGF before I said it. And then Elk was warned for saying BLGF. Crazy, isn't it? Well, I mean, the last thing you'd want in the highly competitive world of Blood Bowl is a sense of humour. <laughs> because, you know, there's so much at stake. <laughs> yeah, I know, right? The honour and, and prestige. Oh, dear. Oh. It's a shame to go on about this all the time, but this fuck all it is. in the blood ball. <laughs> I mean, this is over. Yeah. It was over all fucking four turns. It's, four I mean, turns it's, into the first half. I'd love to say I saw some opportunities here. This kind of a move, the 
Undeads, here we are. These are the ghouls coming rowdy around that mummy to the left of their team, as I saw it last turn, because uh, I'm still behind the undead. I should switch, shouldn't I? Yeah, he's got a 1D, um, he's got a 1D on the ball. There's a 1D on the ball that might be workable. He's having to push these mummies up into the backfield. I respect it, but again, it's it's just going to mean he gets outflanked, but it's got to be done. It's got to be tried. Yeah, yeah, he's got to give himself a chance, no matter how pathetic the chance is. I mean, it's the same position you're often in against things like Woody's, where you're you're just hoping for a 1 in 36 that suddenly opens a door that wasn't there. Yeah. So you've got to create the opportunities for those fails, um, and then just accept they're probably not going to happen. <laughs> Cambridge University netball team. <laughs> Amazing. Fantastic. <laughs> Oh, oh, he failed. Failed with his reroll. That's it. <laughs> See nuts. <yeah. laughs> oh wow. Could you really wave a scarf with that on it though, and feel good about yourself? <laughs> <laughs> I would love it. <laughs> That'd be genius. This isn't easy for Dio, actually, is it? That stun means shoring up that is. side isn't so good, so, you know. Yeah, it's fine. Yeah, okay. Um, it's not as easy as it was, but it's still very easy. The only thing he's got to be careful about is not hitting the sidestepper. Yeah. As long as he just ignores it and leaves it on that hobgoblin, yeah, um, then it's all fine. Well. Yeah, all right. He'll reinforce around the line of scrimmage, use that as a staging post, and then try and break forwards from there next turn. It, he probably does with these mummies coming into the backfield means he can't do the sort of uh, withdrawn offense and passing around that we were talking about. Another dumb skull. <laughs> oh, okay. That could possibly have made it interesting. There would have been a route opened up if that had quad skulled. He's amazing. Oh, yeah, even even now he's got to take a choice between the uh, the one in six failed bull dodge off, or uh, dropping a, a chaos dwarf back into that corner and leaving the bull there on the mummy. Yeah, he did it. The okay, that's way, what he's done. He? Yeah. And he didn't even block with a mighty blow because he wanted to make sure that guy was still stood, even if it was a dub skull. So yeah, no, Very all sensitive. incredibly safe, not taking the risks. So the risk he's taking here is leaving one of his nice bulls on uh, a mummy. The other mummy is just hitting the loner. He's absolutely fine with that. Ball's in a safe spot. There's very little stopping it heading forwards next turn. It's just the good bull under threat that will be his uh, his mild concern as he heads into the start of turn 10. Yep. Cheers, start with it. You always in the BS. Is that true? Central University of Newcastle upon the Tyne. The combat is very disequilibrated. Well, the journeyman's all right. I guess that means the bull's going to die. <laughs> That'd be an interesting coaching challenge, wouldn't it? Dio would have a lot of adversity to learn through. Yeah. Of course, we have seen the Apothecary go. These Chaos Dwarfs have no back cover. <laughs> yeah. Oh, and there's a player gone. Yeah, it's the 5 SPP shot, a uh, hobgob. And uh, it's now not worth skilling, because uh, it's lost a point of agility. It's trash. Yeah. If he blitz with his, with his... Oh, he's already blitzed with him. Hmm. That's not so good then, is it? He can, dodge around, he can dodge away both of those ghouls then, I guess, and get back in front of the ball and hope for something. Now, the problem with heading out that side is I think the ball's going the other way. Yeah. You've got the two chorfs to uh, knock the zombie over. Either one doing it also Ooh. takes the other zombie. And then the bull that's free at the moment can blitz that white, and then the bull just runs away up that flank. And the game is done. So that bull doesn't get hit, just gets pushed. Yeah. If the mummy advances, it's under one die threat, but probably has to. Yeah. 
qui transpire la faiblesse. And yeah, by doing that block before this dodge means now this guy's on tackle. Yeah. And if he dodges, it means the Hobgoblin can just drop him for that ball to get two die on the mummy. Yeah. So I think he should have gone back and then just gone for pushing his luck with dodges. Like, oh, he's going this way anyway after, after okay. dodging the wrong screen. Mm. Retagging the same Hobgoblin from the other side. Oh, that's yeah, okay, fair. that's fine, isn't it? Yeah, that's fine. I wouldn't have minded if he'd carried on on that route, dodged past that Hobgoblin and kept going, because I do still think that's the side to push up with this yeah. Hobgoblin. Yeah, I like going one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, potentially, yeah. Still very hard to see that ghoul getting back enough to be relevant. I think with one GFI, he, he makes a screen there. I wouldn't have yeah, hit that. The plus agility one has now rendered itself uh, inoperable by dropping itself onto this chorf that stood back up. Yeah. yeah Out on the right-hand flank. That's the one I'd want to get away from, because obviously it's move eight. Uh, and agility four and blodge, so it's uh, it's a very nice piece. Okay, so he's just gonna hit the zombie. I don't love that. And what? Just mark up the white, I suppose. You can put the bull around the other side of it, can't you? Yeah. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight to get there. Yeah, that should be doable. I mean, I'm still at the same plan. You still run to the same place. I'd just have knocked the white over rather than a zombie. Yeah, that's the thing. I mean, like at this point, it's like it's all a bit splitting hairs now, isn't it? Because like Dio yeah. kind of knows he's won, and he's always going to leave something on because yeah. everything's pretty easy in Blood Bowl, isn't it? You know, like it, and I've noticed K Fog especially is like goes, "How can you leave that on? It's only a four plus five plus," and it's like, yeah, but that's you know, it's hard to. Yeah. And Core does have a lovely habit of leaving out the eight other blocks you need to do first. <laughs> yeah. It's yeah. only a four plus. Yes, but after seven successful pows. <laughs> yes, but it's a four plus then. Ha ha, that's stupid. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> oh, it's funnier than Mr. Bean, look. Um, yeah. It... First of all, odd sense of humour. Secondly, you need to include all of the parameters before you mock. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, you know, like, I'm not having a go at KFOG, obviously, but you know. That, that, Neither that, am I. That was yeah. said with love. I hope everyone realizes that. Yeah, yeah. He's just, uh, he's, just he, he's. I think, I think he is a bit too, a bit like not me, but you know what I mean. Like, I think he's. I think he. Uh, I don't know. I don't yeah, really I think know he holds to a very high standard. Yeah, and and basically an impossible standard. Yeah. Which he himself, you know does mostly display uh, yes but... <laughs> but yeah no one's perfect are they so you know we can't all be a toxic shore border <laughs> okay so that bull is uh, decided it wants to be on the route between the plus agility ghoul which can hit the ball carrier and the ball carrier because of the failed go for it and that of course leaves the white dodge off for an easy one die he's got this bull though hasn't he this bull can run around yeah so the other bull's gonna have to come all the way around nine yep all three gfis basically and it's still just a four three how can you leave a four plus three plus <laughs> but it's a four plus <laughs> i'm not gonna i won't do anymore <laughs> And here we go, that's the second. And he makes all the dice rolls. Look at that. And up. drops it in on the third. So that was forced by the go for it fail, or else he'd have, I think, done another one and been out of range of the uh, of the plus agility ghoul. Yeah. But now it's, it's you know, locked up tight. Yeah. Four plus three plus, I'd still be taking it, but it's, oh, yeah. it's not great, is it? No, it's not great, but it's, it's the best he's going to get. It's a re-roll sucker. Now, of course, Dio, Dio has no re-rolls left, but does have his wizard, wizard in his pocket. Yeah. Uh, wriggling around. And uh, Mad Jake has two re-rolls. Yeah, I mean, he's rolled two dub skulls, hasn't he, this half? He has. Know, so. Yeah. And those re-rolls, of course, irrelevant if Dio goes 2-0 up. You don't see that coming back with this few undead left. Exactly, yeah. This is the last chance this... this it is. It's, it's an all or nothing. Now, the good thing about sort of ruling that Agility 4 Ghoul dodge out is it makes it very easy as to how you come for this. And if the 4+, plus, 3+, plus, 5+, plus works, the plus Agility Ghoul can come afterwards and try and uh, muddy up the ball or maybe even 
if you get it hit in the right direction, recover. Yeah, maybe. Got to think positive, Jim, because it's the only way this gets what done, isn't it? Yeah. Oh, yeah, you've got to go for it. Yeah, it's, it's horrible as it is. <laughs> as horrible as it is. Yeah, it was pretty great. It was pretty great, Ducky, yeah. <laughs> Well, the, it, there's a line where you can step from one of those to the other country, isn't there, Ducky? I mean, they are next to each other. Yeah. yeah. And without using accents, tapes, and time to prepare, and as no one's paying me, as a drop-in uh, impression, I, yes, I was happy to get the giddiness and the chuckle more yeah. than the truth of his accent, let's put it that way. Yeah. I felt the veracity came in the, the love with which it was done, yeah. not necessarily the tune. <laughs> Yeah, so he has got this guy. I mean, he doesn't want to move him first, does he? Like, he could technically move him first as an assist, oh. but that seems terrible. Well, I mean, the, the problem is, why not? I mean, what are you going to do afterwards that's... Anything you do afterwards could help. Nothing you do beforehand could help. If this fails, you're dead anyway. So... I mean, I suppose, yeah, this ghoul move up from the back, I don't hate it. But even then, there's a chance it could have done something relevant afterwards. On a go for it, if you still did have the chance to. Yeah. Um, sometimes you've just got to screw your courage to the sticking post and go for it. And if it fails, well, it fails, but... Oh, I don't like making the GFI first and the dodge first. No, no, I thought those oh, two were a little... Facing. Oh, no. Oh, Jesus. Well, that's... Yeah, that won't work. Okay, well, that's... Yeah. Okay, well done. <laughs> So there you go, this is like, you know, someone someone ripped the piss out of me because I said it, but a lot of people do go for, you know, making your opponent roll a, roll dice or whatever. And obviously it's better for you to roll a 1 in 6 chance of working than your opponent, hoping your opponent fails a 1 in 9 fail. And this is essentially what he's done, isn't he? Like, Not even that, I mean, you just smack it with the bull. Yeah, I know, I know. But you know, like, that's... And that's even if that fails, you've got the dodge off. Yeah. Okay, so you... Yeah, the bull's been tagged. Oh dear. Um, yeah, I. It's so difficult because one of the things we teach, you know, when you are learning blood bowl, is don't do the risky stuff, do the safe stuff, let them do the fails. But in this situation, it does almost reverse. I mean, you've given yourself a tiny, tiny chance of maybe getting to the point where they're not at two nil, and you've yeah. just got loads to do to get it to one one. Yeah, I mean, Whereas this is a bigger risk, and it paid off. Yeah. Maybe there was a chance. Big you fan, were in much Jimmy, and, and enjoyed the recent Fumble podcast. PC. Sometimes it's better to go Cheers for all the marbles. from North America. Yeah. Oh, um, sorry, you, you, there was a donation there. Sorry, uh, PC, as you were talking, but thank you very much. Quality grapes. Uh, oh, bless you, quality grapes. It's glorious. There you go. Well, we're hoping that the Fumble podcast will be more regular now that Throw X Work situation is more regular. Mm. Um, we like to try and chuck them out every sort of two to three weeks we don't really try and hold ourselves to a schedule because it's a hobby not a job but yeah. so this was enjoyed a enjoyed chatting blood bowl so i'm glad people enoy listening yeah this was a one in four chance by the way the four plus three plus two d was a 27.7 percent chance of working and this right. is an 11 percent chance of failing isn't it so yeah like it's just it's more than twice as likely like this was just absolutely the wrong thing <laughs> yes, I mean, the fail state is bleak, but then it was so bleak anyway. Yeah. You, know, you may as well be hung for a sheep as a lamb. <laughs> yeah. There you go. <laughs> it's a proper country knowledge oh, to blood bowl. Store just lit a match. <laughs> this stops now! <laughs> Dear, what what's begun now? <laughs> oh, store in the rebel clan just wrote this. <laughs> stop now! <laughs> oh god! <laughs> oh god! Oh, and that's the and that's the highlight of the match, everybody. <laughs> there you are, live blood bowl drama. <laughs> Just like what we need next is a TV show called Blood Bowlers Wives, isn't it? That's the. <laughs> oh, jeez.
Jesus Christ. Storr's fucking great, isn't he? He's an, he's an arch he's memer. Fantastic. <laughs> Absolutely fantastic. <laughs> yeah. Oh, dear me. But yeah, thank you very much anyway, Quality Grips. Thank you very much. Sorry that it was kind of glossed over with the uh, with the percentages and the, and everything and that. But yeah, thank you very much. Glorious. And you can check out the, the they do them every now and then, don't you? Don't you? <laughs> but you can try and do one a month for you. Is that the idea? For the podcast, yeah. I mean, yeah. It, like I said, there isn't really a schedule. It's it's when when we get round to it, when we feel like it. Every couple of weeks, if we feel there's things we want to talk about, every month, if there isn't. But yeah, we're trying to put content out more regularly than one every three months, which is what it's been during <laughs> yeah. lockdown, really. Yeah. Because uh, Mark had a real problem. He's a driving instructor, and of course, you can't sit in close proximity to people telling them to you know, firmly grasp a knob anymore. <laughs> <laughs> Couldn't do that since the, since the 90s, could you? <laughs> oh, oh, look! He did, it. he did the one day this time. Specialising as he did in uh, in you know manual control cars, not automatics. Yes. Um, so he got a job as a Tesco delivery driver and just found it was taking his every waking minute. And oh dear! He was very tired and things, uh, but now that things have settled down a little more, he should have some more time. He hopes. Yeah, it's it's a pretty good scar, isn't it? It is. Yeah. I mean, it's it's. What Dio should have been fearing all along is there has been those ball sacking chances. It's come along. He's got the time to get this up the field. It's whether there's anything to get it to, and obviously the bull is still a huge, huge issue. Yeah. I don't think he can afford to go and get this ball, can he? No, because it would leave him on the sideline. He's got sidestep though. He's, he, he can just he can just block the block the ball here. He's made an irrelevant block first. I mean, block this ball, get this sidestep on on the side. That one day you can tag the uh, you can tag the other ball. So this yes, can be right. this can be pretty good. The problem is if the side stepper comes back to, to fetch the ball, there's nothing going up the field to receive the ball, Jim. No. Because of our, our multiple ghoul death. No, but you know, he's still got four turns, he's still got time. Yeah, yeah, you you got the while sometimes the now is more important than the future, isn't it? Right, I've just got to help uh, Mini Chest too with to some lunch. I'll be back in a couple of seconds. Okay, okay. I don't like that. I think you've got to tag. I think you have to tag the ball, not the uh, not the uh, chaw. Like the chaw's only strength three. I think you had to. I think you had to make the GF5 tag him. This is too, you know, too shit. I think that's kind of a big mistake. Okay, so he's not going for the recovery at all. Okay, I guess that's not terrible actually, because he would also just get bolted as well, couldn't he? Whereas now, the bolt isn't really exciting. Yeah, okay, this is actually okay. All right, I'll I'll, I'll change my mind. This is pretty good. That's actually pretty decent, isn't it? But the the the, the wizard is a real problem. But no rerolls for Dio. How the fuck does Dio pick it up? He can't, can he? So... Yeah, this is actually pretty good, isn't it? I think Dio should have banged it in last turn. I can't believe he stalled it, honestly. He was in range, wasn't he? He was in scoring range. He should have just banged it in. He's moved seven. He should have absolutely banged it. I, I think it's crazy that Dio didn't bang it in. I know he's got the wizard, but he's got no rerolls. He's won it up. Just bang it in and win. Yeah, that's what he had to do. I didn't like that stall. He's got the edge four there. He can roll dice. I know he was unwilling to roll the dice the turn before, but he can roll the dice. And there's just no need to give him the chance to roll the dice, I don't think. Can block him, tag this sidestepper, then blitz the uh, move it, and just don't pick it up, just stand next to it. It changes a bit that you haven't got a reroll, so maybe you just do the blitz first, actually. Do the bull blitz first. It's like, it's just adding more risk to it, isn't it, by doing that first. If that one works and the bull blitz fails, I would have rather had the bull blitz work. And have that fail. 
Because if I did a re-roll, I'd have rather done that first, I think. If you can follow that logic, I mean, if it is logic. <laughs> the rumblings of a lunatic. Maybe rather than logic. Hello, backyard Dodo. He's got to hit the edge here, hasn't he? Oh, 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 oh boy! Woo! For me, guys! Alright, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. That's terrible, though, isn't it? But then he's got that him down. Did he just. Was he stunned? I'm not. I can't remember. I think he must have been. Be nice to hand off to him, wouldn't he, and then just get him further up the field. But like, where does he go? Where does he do it? Where does he go? Even if he does get up the field. Yeah, it's very hard to see them finding a safe space. Um, I'm trying to see if the mummy can, in some way, grab enough of those dwarfs to it that there's a spot around it that could be safe. With the two zombies, I don't. It's not impossible. Yeah, he's, just, he's doing this, which was kind of like an idea. It's not great, is it? But... No, it's not. And with the pushes, it's particularly not strong. It really needed the power. Oh, I, I don't like putting in the reroll. But no, that that said, that I had accepted the pushes. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It is stronger with the power, as I said. It's a much stronger field position, but that's that's now one of your two in the hole rerolls. And of course, there is a whiz back, which uh, I think we'll probably see next to start of next turn. Yeah, I think so too. Fumble Ruski. <laughs> oh, fuck. Yeah, that would be good, wouldn't it? If Fumble Ruski was just an action people could do, it'd be pretty good. But no one's going to fucking take it, are they? Like, it's mental to take. I think we might get teams starting with a few of those skills, just so that we see them on the pitch somehow. Maybe, yeah. Uh, I think. Well, I think. I, I think uh, Hefties. Hefties could take it, couldn't they? Hefties could take mm. Risky. That yeah. would be the only player that could take it. I, I just thought it was so meme level terrible. I haven't actually thought about whether anyone could take it, Jim. That's a very good point. <laughs> yeah. Who would ever want that? Yeah, um, I mean, Gutters was the other one that occurred to me. Yeah, but they, because now that their passing has been hit a little bit, they've still got the speed and the agility. So yeah. one being able to hand off, that one being able to put it down, and then another one pick it up might give them that full length of, of the field ability. I just don't think they need it, though, do they? Like a good hand off. Yeah, it's just yeah, so true. fucking easy. And yeah, as Wolfbark says, it's a double. Whereas, uh, whereas yes, it's good it's point. Yeah. So it's passing access, people, really, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. Hef Hefty's the obvious one, isn't it? Because it gives you a. It improves your throw teammate and they've got passing access. Oh yeah, people can take it obviously and people can win with it, but what I mean is people can't take it as an optimal <laughs> choice. <laughs> I love to well absolutely take it. Yes, he will and find ways to ruin your, your day with it. Yeah, yeah, he'll, he can take it and he can win with it, but it still doesn't make it good. good right, so he's right. managing what this I said, he's good, managed to get it? two of the chorfs onto one of the mummies, that's yeah. pretty good. Yeah, he's got the other chore that's in front good. of the ball stuck on his uh, his other mummy. That's pretty good. There's kind of a cage around the ball. Yeah. Certainly, there's uh, a screen between the bulls and the ball. That's all excellent. This this has to be the wizard turn. Yeah. Honestly, with seven players removed, this is this was great. Yeah, it's it's it's. I mean, it's been some last last hope, desperate stuff, but it's it's worked, and that's what was needed. So it's it's been well applied. And now Dio's just on, on hanging by a thread, isn't he? Without rerolls, anything could go yep. wrong at any point. I'd hate a Dio not scoring, honestly. <laughs> With him being one nil up, if he was nil nil, yeah, just stole, you bang it in, you win. Just yeah. win, and then worry about everything else afterwards. Yeah. But as we said, sometimes it's looking at the you know the equity for the whole competition. He, he doesn't want to win and go out next round. That doesn't interest him. Iron Jaws, no chance. There's a, uh, there's a uh, big mouth which is crap. Really, it's not worth forty. 
So I guess underworld, an underworld gutter runner could take monstrous mouth. Hey, not big mouth, is it monstrous mouth? Monstrous mouth. An underworld gutter, maybe, but again, the underworld gutter could take so many mutations. But monstrous mouth is actually, I, I think, it's hard to see yourself picking it, but it's the kind of skill that if you got randomly for ten TV, there's yeah. all sorts of lovely builds you could do on top of it. Yeah. Maybe maybe you could just take rando mutations for Skaven, right? Well, I'm a great believer that Chaos, for example, the very first beastman that skills, I think you can definitely do a random mutation on. Because almost whatever you get, there's a build for that goat behind it. Just the more skills you've got on the team, the less likely a random pick is going to add to what your team does. You see what I mean? Yeah. So once you've got four goats skilled up, then suddenly getting a two heads one or an extra arms one is a lot less useful. Yeah. Because there's you know there's things in your team design that you need specifically filled. But on a completely skillless chaos team, name me a mutation that, that isn't particularly useful. There are a couple, but you know, there's a lot that start you off pretty brilliantly. And so efficiently. Yeah. And yeah those are the sorts of players you then can afford to rebuy because they've got an efficient build. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, you could do the same with like, any team, really, couldn't you? you know, like, yeah. dwarves could take a random strength skill. They've well, the problem is there's a, lot, there's a lot more just genuinely bad random strength skills. Yeah, but there's I mean, three really fucking good ones. There is. There is. <laughs> and getting those cheap would be huge. Yeah. Um, and certainly just before a competition or something, depending, as we've said all along, you and I, Jim, you know, it's all about what does the competition look like? Are there rebuys in it? Is there a maximum number of games played or a maximum TV? Or, you know, once we know those things, we'll know what's what. But if, for example, it's time sensitive, then the day before a chalice starts, if I've got a, you know, a random skill available or no skill, it's a good time to roll one, isn't it? See what happens. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, all sorts of situations. If you're in a, if you're in the SFL and in you, you know, you get an MVP and your your second game's against Skuro, then you think, well, I'm better off having a, and you know, any skill is better than nothing against the winner three and winner five. Absolutely. <laughs> and stuff the like dominating that. force. I need something to give me an edge. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, Dio's. Now this is one thing that does really, really bug me about this client. I mean, I, I'm slightly to get used to the pretty pictures instead of skill names. Oh. Dub skull. At least he kept one reroll back. Sorry, calcium. <laughs> but of course, I hadn't spotted till now that one of these mummies is only AV8. Yeah, yeah. Fails the dodge. I think, that was the the dodge wrong play. I think he uh, If he goes back one, two, three, four, GFI, GFI, you'd have to get a chain to score. Um, so I think he had to do one one zombie picking up and handing off to him, and then and then moving forward with him. Uh, but as it is, is oh god, it's it's the it's the move five one. Dio got a handoff now, hasn't he? This chorf who was on five has got a Kaz. So that's a dream result for Dio. He might be able to get it to stall in here. This chorf blocker. Oh, if he no. could knock everything down, that blocker is in range because yeah. of its move five. I hate that. That's true. <laughs> Just needs to knock the mummy over, has done, and now this Chorf strolls with its mighty move up into the end zone to win the game 2-0. No, I don't think you do. I think you I think you are I think you try and hand off. He's still handing off. Yeah, yeah. Hand off hand off to this one. Look, he's blitzing him. Yeah. You wanna make these GFIs and hand off to this guy. Level him up. Well, it is all about that chalice equity. I mean, there's three more SPP on this, on Chugs, doesn't do him any good, gets him to 70. That's not even in MVP range. There's almost there's an irrelevance for that touchdown. Yeah. It's probably worth 50% of the handoff. Oh, there's the other one as well, there's Dimmy. So Dimmy can, is also in range to pick it up if it fails as well. So that's great, isn't it? I'll yep. get it hand, hand it off to him. So maybe you go make it double GFI this turn or whatever. Is he just going to hand off to him? Oh, that's boring as fuck. Yeah, I mean, tackle or him. kick on Dimmy would be useful. I'm amazed he's not going for the chorf. That's he, so he much more useful than an extra one. I think he still is. I think Dimmy's yeah, there for the pick-up. Yeah, he's first so that he's in range of the handoff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Puts him in range. Here we go. The most exciting thing that's happened this half. Woo! Is it fair? <laughs> 
now? Do you do the 50% pickup or the 66? Both of them gain a skill level. I still need to go with the chalk. 89, he's got sure hands. Of course he is, yeah, 89%. I'd still go with the chalk and take the 50%. I think I would, yeah. I'd really want that extra guard. Yeah, the guard. Although, of course, his missing is coming back, making the team a lot more powerful for next turn, next game. Yeah, yeah strength up, isn't it? Strength up blocker. Yep. So, yeah, I think I'd just, I think I'd go 50. Like, kick off return, it's just not that exciting, is it? If it could, get, if it could guarantee... Taking on a move go, seven piece. Yeah. But if you were stuck with a move six ball recovery, kickoff return looks even nicer. But at move seven, it's it's a bit meh. Yeah. And if you already had tackle, dodge, if you didn't already team, have eight tackle right? players, if you didn't already have yeah. eight tackle players, yeah. <laughs> but if you could guarantee a stat or a double, like uh, like yeah, and even Blood kick, I don't hate there, but it's still it's still a bit meh, isn't it, compared to another guard? Yeah. I think you just go for the. Uh, I think he's going for it. Or possibly go for the the hobgoblin pickup pass to him. <laughs> There's your other option. <laughs> that would have been outstanding. I don't know why he's putting these three in. Is it? Am I missing something? Yeah, uh, for the chain scatter. Chain oh, scatter. the chain scatter. He's putting enough people <laughs> that can scatter all the way into the end zone and be caught on a five by a chore. Brilliant. That's. That's less likely than me being ready for Angelina Jolly locking, knocking on the door and saying, today's the day, Dave, isn't it? It's, it's, it's the triumph of optimism in all situations, and I kind of love it. Well, there we are, 2-0. <laughs> yeah, Dio, Dio gets paid off for not instantly banging in and winning on like turn four of the second half. <laughs> Instead, he manages to get it on the chaff that he wanted, and he's got two chaff levels out of this, mate. And, and as you say, the strength four chaff comes back, so now his team's looking a lot better, isn't it, for the next round? Two guards. Incredible. And he's able to put out a line of scrimmage that he just doesn't care about. Yeah, wonderful LOS for him. A great game for Dior. And his, his inevitable chalice win. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, he's got a chance, hasn't he? He has got a chance. Just the fact he's in the game, it's like it doesn't matter that his team's a bit. Thirty-two, co thirty-one coaches that have a chance, Jim. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and Dio is one of those. Yes. Yeah, and like a decent. Does he have a better though, than yeah. one in thirty-one chance? Yeah, he's a good coach, and it's a solid team. Yeah. Um, yes. Yeah. When Wolfbark won, he had a completely. A completely boring, unexciting chaff team, but if you're in the, you know, and there's been people with terrible coaches with really good teams, you know, you've always got a chance, haven't you? Like, you know, yes. good coaches are always going to have a chance, and good teams are always going to have a chance. And if you ally the two, then you've got a, a decent chance, but. Yeah. But I mean, still not that good a chance. The vagaries of knockout Blood Bowl, a terrible coach with a fairly ordinary team still has a chance. They do, yeah. yeah. I mean, look at. Look at uh, I mean, not not obviously. This is neither of those things. But Shawnee, you know, he, like pretty much everyone was picking Shawnee to be the favourite. He had a great team, great coach, and Bush out in the first round. So it's. Uh, I'm proud to say I was casting that with uh, my good friend Kefo, and uh, one of the first things I said was, uh, "I don't think this is as easy for Shawnee as everyone else thinks it is." I was mocked uh, by Cole. <laughs> 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 How could you say that? <laughs> Such a good team. Um, <laughs> you think the little dwarfs could win? Um, and sure enough, Singola did exactly what he does know how to do, which is he just you know, smashed up into the Wood Elves, ground them down, created those opportunities, and uh, took them out. Yeah. He didn't win the game sure. by removing Elves. He won every drive by removing Elves. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, he did, yeah. I mean, uh, you know, I didn't think it was like, like uh, that's what I said, I was like, I thought Shawnee was the favourite to win the whole thing, but he's still only like 10%, not, probably not even 10%, sorry, probably not even 10%, yeah. even as a huge favourite, he's probably not 10% to win the whole thing, right? Well, I said it before, Jim, you know, the best coaches in Blood Bowl on their hottest streaks get about an 80% record. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So that means they lose one game in five. Yeah. Well, there's six games in the Chalice, so, you know. Yeah, it's, very it's good. Point. No, there's never a gimme. It's never definitely in anyone's hands. Yeah. But what a game of Blood Bowl. Um, 
I feel very, very bad for them. You know, Dio got all the dice from the Blitz at the very start, which just destroyed the undead momentum. Um, then they came up with some nice options to try and recover that ball and move it forwards. It just didn't work. Second half, it was a really nice response. I mean, you're spot on, Jim. We should have talked about it more. Given a paucity of options, he absolutely worked them as hard as he knew how. Uh, you know, Mad Jake, I thought, did a really good job, but it just... Dio existed his way through it, and despite the loss of his re-rolls and him turning down the early win, got everything he wanted. Didn't he just... Sometimes good things happen to bad people. <laughs> Look at that. Ten removals to four. From 11 AV breaks to 15. <laughs> 11 AV breaks into ten removals. <laughs> it's unbelievable, isn't it? And the KOs were basically yeah. Kaz as well. Only one KO recovered. He's going to be really unhappy about the uh, AV break that wasn't a removal. Um, <laughs> and rightly so. He's going to feel very diced. What's the point in breaking AV if you don't remove the piece? Yeah, you'll, ha you'll have to go to dice.not.com. <laughs> 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 right, I'm going to uh, check that my children haven't burned down the kitchen. It's been right. a pleasure, Jim. Yep, been glorious. Thank you very much, PC. Absolutely. <laughs> Thanks for watching, everyone. Don't forget to leave a like and subscribe, and stay fantastic.